Hey there. So today's video, um, this is the explain portion. So we have a lot explored a little bit about two different processes that go into um, some changes that we were talking about the plant and the fog rising. So now we're going to explain a little bit more about what those changes actually were. So we're going to answer some of those questions that we had. So we're gonna talk about the two different types of changes. This is the two different types of changes we're gonna focus on for this quarter. So we're gonna talk about the two models right here in this picture, and we're gonna come up with some definitions. So physical changes and chemical changes, okay? So one of the changes we observed in the explore section is known as a physical change. And the other change we observed is a chemical change. So we're gonna think about what, what are, what is a, a physical change and what is a chemical change? So in here, we have some molecules. So think about the molecular level of, of things, okay, that we are talking about. These are molecules, these are water molecules, all right? So this is H2O, all right? And if we add heat to them, then they're gonna get bigger and they're gonna bubble around, they're gonna space, spread out a little bit, right? But is it still water molecules? Did the molecules change at all? Or are they just kind of spread out and just maybe a little bigger, right? So they're still water molecules. They did not change physically, they're different, but, but molecularly, they're the same, okay? So that is a physical change. So that's like you, your feet grew out of your shoes. That's a physical change. Your feet are still feet, but they grew, okay? A chemical change is something different. A chemical change means something happened, um, some different combination happened. So right here, you have hydrogen atoms and you have oxygen atoms that are separate. And some process took place here and it created a product that was um, H2O, okay? Now, typically, this is probably not our H2O, but this, um, these are the reactants, and this is the product, okay? We talked about reactants and products before. This would be your reactant, which would be your water, maybe your pond water, and then we had condensation, and then our product was fog, which is still water, okay? So same thing here. We have um, two different chemical equations. This is a chemical, this is a chemical, they're separate, but they go together and then something happens here and then they change into something different. So you started with this, but you ended with something completely different. That's a chemical change. So that's the key between the two changes is whether if you start with, with this and you end with the same thing, physical. If you start with this and you end with something completely different, it's chemical, okay? So if I start with an apple and I end with an apple, physical. If I start with an apple and I end with a pear, those aren't the same. So something happened in between, okay? That would be a chemical. That's a terrible example, but you get the picture, okay? The next slide here gives you some two videos that give you some um, examples of what the differences are. This one we'll watch a little bit. In after. this video, I'm going to go over the That's difference between exciting. a chemical change and a physical change. I'm gonna give you a so minute. So let's start with the definition of a chemical change, which is that you're going to have different molecules at the beginning and the end of the change. So let's just start off with an example. So let's pick iron rusting. So at the beginning, before you have any change, you just have your iron, let's picture a nail. And so now we know what our change is, it's this iron is going to rust. So after the change, we have the iron left over from our nail, it didn't all turn into rust, but we also have this new molecule, we have a rust molecule. And so that's the definition of a chemical change, we have different molecules at the beginning, and the end, if you add or delete any molecules, that means that you've had a chemical change. So we can also from this draw this chemical equation. We can write this out. This is a lot of chemistry, right? So we see here that we needed iron, that's our nail. We needed O2, so that's just oxygen that was in the environment naturally in the atmosphere. And then it created rust, which has the formula Fe2O2. 
O3. So chemical changes will have these chemical equations like this, which are able to show us our reactants and our products. And so just one more thing that will kind of help you uh, tell the difference, and this isn't 100%, but a lot of the time, a chemical change will have a color change and or a smell, and there's usually no way to get back to their original substance. So in this example, we do have a color change, right? Rust has that orangey color um, that's different from iron, and there's a slight smell, not a huge one, right? And then also this other thing, which I think when you're doing problems that are just asking you to tell the difference between chemical and, and physical, this is the easiest one, is think to yourself, can I go backwards? Can I have a rust? nail and go back to having just a clean nail? And the answer is no, right? Even if you clean off that nail and it looks kind of shiny again, you're still going to look at your rag or your you know, paper towel and you're going to see all that rust that you have. And you aren't able to actually turn that rust back into iron. So there's really no way to go back. All right, so that's chemical changes. And now let's look at physical changes. So the definition for that is that there's a change, right? It's still a physical change. It's not just nothing, but it's not chemical. And so a lot of the definition of physical is just whatever it was for chemical, now it's not true. It's the opposite for physical. So in this case, we have the exact same molecules at the beginning and the end of the change. We have not added or gotten rid of any molecules. So for this example, let's think of just cutting a nail in half. So again, in our beginning, we're gonna have just our nail made of iron, and then at the end, we're just going to have our nail cut in half, which is still just iron. We didn't add any molecules or remove any, but there's still a change, right? You wouldn't say that a nail is the exact same thing as a nail has been cut in half. It's a difference. You've done a change. And so for this, we could write a chemical equation, but it would just look like this, right? So there's no real purpose to. So you're going to see that we don't really write physical changes like this because it's like, well, we still have the same thing. And then also just as an FYI, when you're taking chemistry, most of the problems you're going to do, probably about 90% of the things you talk about are going to be chemical changes. We're really focused on how do we make and break molecules and bonds. And so physical changes will be things that you will touch on, but most of chemistry is spent on chemical changes. And so just uh, the little signifiers, again, this isn't 100%, but it's kind of a good guideline. A lot of the time, a chemical change will not have a color change and or a smell, and you can get back to the original substance. So in this, we see that there's no color change, there's no smell with just cutting a nail in half. And uh, can we get back to the original substance? Well, it'd certainly be easier. We could weld it back and it would kind of look the same. It's certainly easier to get back to a nail that's just a... Uh, being glued back together than it is to turn rust back into iron. That's really hard. All right, so now I'm going to do a bunch of practice problems. Okay, so she meant physical right here and not chemical. So, so there's a couple of vid videos. If you are still confused on what the difference is, please watch those. Okay, so then which was physical and which was chemical in our data sets? So if you think about those, okay, think about our data sets. Did the plant grow? I know we think, and I think too, and it was okay to think this, but when our plant grew, well, it got bigger, but it's still a plant. So that's physical, right? Well, I, I think that. I thought that. So it's nothing wrong with thinking that. However, the product that we got from this was oxygen from the plant and, from, and glucose from the plant. So when we started, it was just carbon dioxide and water. And what we ended with was glucose and oxygen. So clearly that's not the same. So it's clearly different. Molecularly, it's different. Therefore, it has to be a chemical change based on the definition that we just heard about in the video. Okay, so that has to be a chemical change because the molecules are different at the end. Now, the water, the fog rising off the water, it's water at the beginning, it was pond water, okay? So it's water, H2O. And then the fog is just basically condensation from the reaction between the air temperature and the water itself, which caused a change in matter, a change, a phase change, okay? So it's still water, H2O. So that's going to be a physical change. So phase changes like ice, 
to liquid and liquid to ice or uh, liquid to gas, that is a phase change. So that's always going to be a physical change. It's never going to be a chemical change. All right. So that's basically the answers to that. So hopefully um, if you didn't know that, then, hey, we learned something new today. All right. School. Go us. So now which changes, so if you were to go back into your student guide and if you were going back in to say, um, categorize these changes that we noticed before, instead of chain, um, categorizing them as to size or, di or weight or difference or this was there then and not now, if we categorize these as to physical or chemical changes, now how would you change them, right? So would the tree be physical or chemical? That's an easy one, right? It's still a tree, so that's going to be physical. So, and then how would the um, deer compo decomposing, what would that be? So, well, the deer went from being there to not being there, so that's probably decomposed, that's probably physical or chemical, right? Because the chemical decomposition, it's, it's uh, changed the molecules, went into the ground and soaked up, right? So that's going to be a chemical change. So think about um, the differences that you saw and are they physical or are they chemical? So that's kind of where I want to leave you with that lesson. All right, so go back to your student guide and kind of think about that. All right, so that is, so you're going to write your, in your student guide, based on the models, what seems to be the biggest difference between physical and chemical change, write your own definition of physical, and chemical. And then what are the differences did you notice? All right, here. And then some examples. All right, so you can use your, um, so go back to the engage, the differences between the past and the present images, the river environment, <clears throat> and which changes do you think may have been physical and which ones may have been chemical? Think about the changes that you put in there. And then, and then, um, finish that. Okay, let's stop there.